we launched the Tasty Pastry. It's a low carb Pop Tart. It's got three to four grams of net carbs, and we love this show. This is our best place to be in LA. Today is Wednesday, July 27, 2022. Let's find out what's going on in the world of bodybuilding and fitness. Once again, we're back and better than ever with another brand new edition of Recap Wednesday, where we're kicking things off today with a recap of the Chicago Pro, or as we like to call it, bodybuilding's Midsummer Spectacular. And as you might have expected, we're starting off our coverage here with Men's Open, where the big headline of the weekend came from Antoine Valiant, who delivered a career best performance that earned him a well-deserved trip back to the Olympia. In the 212, we saw former top 10 Olympian Bo Lewis return to form with what might have been his biggest career win. In classic, Jonathan Pelkey continued his hot streak by racking up another hard-earned victory, and a crazy competitive men's physique lineup was won by Nick Coe, who managed to deliver the goods and earn a hard night's victory. Over on the women's side of things, we're starting with women's bodybuilding, where we saw Angela Yeo score the first win of her career. So congratulations on a job well done. Sarah Kovacs earned a win with a strong performance in the fitness division and in figure Julia Champlin was absolutely lights out here as she closed out the first win of her career. In women's physique, Ashley Jones was outstanding from start to finish, so be on the lookout for her to do really important and great things come the rest of the season. Jessica Wilson looked tremendous with her win in the bikini division and we're wrapping up our recap here with wellness where we saw Isamara Santos lock up her first win of the season with a strong, strong performance. The next stop on our Recap Wednesday tour is taking us to Mexico, where we had some high-level action going down in the Classic Physique Division. And after a long day of intense action, when the dust finally settled, it was Brazil's Gabriel Zanacanella Mercado who found himself as the last man standing. The runner-up spot went to George Arturo Mercado, who looks like he did just enough to hold off a strong push from third place finisher Diogo Alejandro Galinda. Colombia's own Julian Castrano put together a solid effort to bring home a fourth place finish here. And rounding out this solid top five group, we had Mexico's George Luis Guerrero Gallegas. Next up, we have the Masters Pro World Championships, and there were a lot of names to get through here, so we're going to do our best to run down the line. We're starting things off with the Men's Open, where we saw the ageless wonder Rusty Jeffers win the 40-plus, my old friend Willie Stalling win the 50-plus, Donnie Wetson win the 60-plus, Pete Hayna win the 70-plus, and Manny Walcott take home the 80-plus. In the 212 division, former Olympian Milton Martinez won the 40 plus and 50 plus divisions. And Donnie Wetson double dipped to win the 60 plus division. In classic physique, Bennett Streets won the 40 plus, Jik Chen Huang won the 50 plus, and Randy Watson was your 60 plus winner. In men's physique, Kevin Reeder won the 40 plus and 50 plus divisions, and Martin Berger was your winner in 60 plus. Over on the women's side of things, in women's bodybuilding, Lenore Gregson won 40 plus, Gina Hall took the 50 plus, while Michelle Brent won the 60 plus. In figure, Yakuna Bentz won the 40 plus division, Lisa Lakowski won the 50 plus, and Marley Harden won the 60 plus division. In bikini, Marika Abato earned the win in the 40 and 50 plus divisions, Janine Priest brought home the win in the 60 plus, while in women's physique, the 40 and 50 plus was won by Lenore Gregson, who became our first athlete to have wins in two different divisions this year, which is no small feat. And the top honors in this 60 plus division went to Lisa Krause. And last but not least, we have the wellness division where Kimberly O'Connell brought home the titles in both the 35 plus and 40 plus divisions. 
And our last news on the competition front today comes from Ian Valliere, who went on the record a few days ago to announce that he was planning to shut down the rest of his competitive plants for the season so he can focus all of his energy and attention on his Olympia prep. As we all saw two weeks ago at his huge win in Vancouver, Ian is already far and away better than he was at the same point last year. But he says it's still not good enough because in his words, you can't play seventh forever, which is a reference to where he placed at last year's Olympia, in case you didn't catch that. Like a lot of people in our corner of the world, Ian is someone who's never satisfied, which is a big part of why he is where he is at this point in his career. So now that he has one more under his belt and he's worked some of the kinks out of the system, I think it's safe to say that he's going to spend the next five months making sure everything is as close to perfect as it can get. So he can step onto the Olympia stage in Vegas, confidently knowing that he's ready to make a strong push to be a top five contender. And that does it for yet another edition of Muscle in the Morning. I'm Dave Palumbo reminding you to always be true to your passions and make sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.